What's up guys, this is Fabulous Fabs, uh, coming to you guys with another short video. So the reason why I started doing YouTube in the first place was because there's like not a lot of self-love out there, there's not a lot of self-respect, there's not a lot of people that like to show share their stories, like their real stories, their struggles, their burdens, their mistakes their truths basically you know what i mean and for me i'm not afraid to show people like what i've overcome what i've done what i'm doing um what i've been through to kind of help somebody out to kind of help people like you're not alone it's not just you it's not just you who just has felt that way it's not just you who has been through that kind of stuff and how i've overcome it or how i've dealt with it i'm not afraid of people judging me or anything like that so this channel is basically like Kind of like me venting or, or me just saying my experiences, me being open with you guys and telling you guys like what the kind of stuff that I've been through, the kind of stuff that I've gone, um, that I've lived and stuff like that. So this video is going to be actually one out of a couple videos. Um, this story that I'm going to be sharing with you guys is a personal. It actually happened to me and how I dealt with it and how I felt and then how I went about it in the whole nine yards. And so it might be a little long, so I decided to cut it into like maybe two or three uh, mini episodes or mini um, videos so that you guys can not be bored out of your minds in one video. So this first one is I started having to grow some tough skin because if you know my family, um, you know that we're not rich people, you know that we don't have money, you know that we didn't come from money, you know, like my family is like first generation, or my siblings and I are first generation Americans, so my parents don't have papers, um, you know, we came, they came from Mexico trying to give us a better living and it was, you know, we lived the typical Mexican life, you know, we lived the life where you somebody owns a house or rents a house and then every single family lives in one room you know we were poor so i think i needed to become tougher because i used to get bullied i used to get bullied i used to get bullied a lot when i was younger um and i would never defend myself i was always just so scared to defend myself you know who my older sister is anita she would always have to defend me because people would always punk me. People would tell me names. Like, it got so bad that I would cry and I wouldn't want to go to school. I remember, I remember like us being poor, you know, and then us like, um, for example, like not having like the brand newest things or not having the brand newest items. I remember my, my parents having to buy our clothes in like layaway or payments, you know, there would be like a little van that would come to the Mexican neighborhoods and they would be like, oh, vendo ropa, vendo ropa, you know? And so with that, like my mom would be like, oh, you know, like I want these two outfits, but they wouldn't give you the outfits until you finish paying them off, obviously. And I remember like, it was like, it wasn't like now that I go to the store and I'm just like, okay, I want that outfit or I want this. And then you, you grab it, you know, that wasn't always a luxury for my family and I. So I think that um, one of the reasons why I got bullied is because like, we didn't have a lot of money back then. And, and I remember like having to have a lot of hand-me-downs because I'm like the second oldest, Anita is the oldest. So she would get some new clothes. I don't wanna say she got all new clothes, but she would get some new clothes. And then when she ran out of it, then I get it. And then it would just go from there. I remember I, for some, for some time, I would have to wear high waters. And if you don't know what high waters are, you haven't been poor, just kidding. If you don't know what high waters are, it's basically pants that don't fit you anymore. So what we would do is either you leave them high waters and they just look funky. I'm pretty sure everybody watching this channel knows what high waters are, but in case you don't, it's basically like, oh shoot. Let me see if I can show you guys basically high waters so look at my cute toes because i'm done today is like the pants are supposed to fit you all the way down here right and they would fit you like a little bit higher than this like you'd pretty much basically grow out of your clothes and um and there was this one guy in particular who would make fun of me he would pick on me a lot 
you know, like, oh man, you're wearing high waters. Oh man, you, you know, you have old shoes. I remember when I was growing up and I was in middle school, the trend back then was Vans. Like Vans was the shit. If you could own a pair of Vans, you were like the shit back then. I think you guys are a little bit crooked. There you go. So I remember like, obviously, like I told you guys, my family was really poor and um, we couldn't afford no fucking Vans. Like. I don't know how much they were at the time, but it was like not even close to in our budget. You know, my mom was like, go to the swap me, get two pairs for a 10 type of deal. You know, I remember there was this imitation brand. The Vans had like a V and a line next to it. If any of you guys are around 30 or a little bit below 30, you know what I'm talking about. And we couldn't afford them. So if you got the imitation Vans, it was just like a line and then straight. And I remember this one guy, like I still remember his first name and his last name because of so much that he bullied me and, uh, and Mario or a hell. I have no idea. I remember like what he looked like. He had like a crooked, a crooked mouth like that. And then he was bald and chubby, like not chubby. He was fat and short. And it wasn't until he would keep on picking on me and picking on me and like, oh, you know, your clothes is old or your shoes are old or you got shoesy at the swap me or you know like he would always just find a reason to pick on me and i never i never knew how to defend myself i never knew how to how to you know get him off my back you know because i i hated going to school and then obviously you guys i don't know if you guys could see through the video but like i have a i have like this lip thing or my my the inside of my I, what was this thing called? I can't think of the name, but basically like this is a little bit out more than normal people. So I would always get made fun of because they were like, oh, you have, back then in middle school, not only was I poor and fuggly, but I also had like the worst freaking teeth. Like, you know, when your teeth all start falling out and then you start getting new ones. Like I had these two front ones Oh no, I only had one. I had one of these and it was like right in the middle. It wasn't even nowhere else. So I'd get made fun of for all kinds of different stuff and I'd get bullied and I'd go home and I'd cry and I'm like, mom, they're calling me rabbit teeth. They're calling me this, this and that. The kids are mean to me. Like I had no friends. I had no friends like in elementary school because I was just too shy and I was just kind of like not with the cool kids. You know, I didn't know how to blend in. I didn't know what to do or I didn't have the nice things, you know? So then I always felt like I needed to bring something for them people to like me. I remember like saving up money, like collecting cans, like doing all kinds of uh, stuff so I could save a couple of bucks to bring candy to school. And then people would call me like the candy chick, the candy girl. And then that's how I started becoming like having friends. And then I remember one teacher, I was in Madison Elementary School in, in, in Santana in the hood. And she came up to me and she's like, you know, you know, those those are not really your friends. They're just with you because because you gave them candy. And like, I knew she was right. Like, I knew she was like looking out for me and stuff. But I was like, man, I have somebody to hang out with at recess. Like, what do you know? You know? So anyways, my older sister always had to defend me from all the bullying that I had. And then she was one year older than me. So when she left elementary school, I was on my own. She was one year older, so I was in elementary school and she had moved to middle school and I was on my own and I didn't know how to how to defend myself and I had to learn. And I remember she would give me the rundown like, okay, in middle school you're gonna do this, in middle school you're gonna do that. And if you know who my older sister is, she's a extreme nerd. She's a straight honor student. She was like, she would never miss school, like perfect attendance type of chick, law abiding citizen, follows all the rules. And so I was like, man, like uh, I don't want to be classified as a nerd either, you know, because for me, like, I, I hated school. I was like, man, I, I hate this place. I'm just here to hang out with people. I'm just here to have fun, you know? And so basically, I felt like the need to, like, fit in, I guess you could say. But when I was in middle school, I actually had cousins that lived around the neighborhood. So I, w I actually had more people to hang out with. I had my cousin, Florida, who is uh, my best cousin. Like, we grew up basically together. So, like, we're really, really close. So then I had more people to hang out with. I had her sister, Maria. I had uh, other cousins that went, we all went to the same school and we're all around the same age 
to where I didn't feel that bad in middle school, you know? But people don't understand that bullying sucks. Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure a bunch of people have experienced it. I was never stuffed into no locker. I was never thrown into a trash can. But just the words, the words, they they stick to your head and they, they like mess with your mind. You know, I remember thinking like at that time, I was like, man, like, and and not that I even wanted to be in a relationship at that time, but I remember thinking like, man, is anybody ever gonna love me? Like, because I'm ugly? Or because I'm not, you know, the pretty girl, I don't have pretty things. Like, I don't have nice clothes. I don't have like anything. Like, I felt like I had nothing to bring to the table. And I always thought like, man, like, if, I don't think I don't think I'm ever gonna like get married and all this stuff because of all the stuff that people said, you know, and it was just kind of like kids. What I realized about what I realized later on about this one guy, Mario Orahel, that I told you guys about, is that I realized that he only made fun of me so that people wouldn't make fun of him because he was just in as bad condition as I was. I remember his. We used to wear like little uniforms or like uh, khaki pants and a, a white shirt or a blue shirt, or khaki uh, skirt or whatever, shorts. There's different options that we could use. It was a uniform school and I remember like his stuff was always tore up and stuff. And and then it, it came to a realization one day that I was like, oh my God, this guy's making fun of me because he's being picked on. He's He's getting bullied. And then I would make fun of myself so that he wouldn't have the chance to make fun of me anymore. You know what I mean? So I would be like, he's like, oh man, you got those shoes at the house? I was like, hell yeah, fool. I wouldn't pay no more than $10 for two pairs, you know? And then, you know, I wouldn't be sad about it. I wouldn't hide about it. I'd, I'd kind of like joke around about it. So I would, I, would, I would be the jokester in school or in class because that was the only way that I, I could survive. That was the only way that I could fit in you know people didn't take me too serious like oh my gosh she's funny oh my gosh she's she's a clown or she's just being dumb you know and then people they just kind of like you know they think that's kind of cool so then you just do that and then that's how you get by and that's how i got by but that's when i had my first signs of trying to get get tough and stuff and then my sister she was a year older than me so she would she left middle school to go to high school and then i was like shit i'm really gonna be alone like i'm really gonna be um alone here and like I said I had cousins that did it uh we were we we went to the same school but we all had different things like I played the violin I was in choir and then all my other cousins they had their own things going on too you know so then eventually when I when I uh started freshman year in high school like I was like man I we moved we moved to a different city we moved to Rialto and um, I was like, oh, man, it's my time to get, you know, start fresh, start new, do my thing. And that's actually where I got Fabulous Fabs from. There was this one girl in one of my classes who would call me Fabs. She'd be like, Fabs this, and she'd like to draw names, like, not tag, but she would do, like, different funky fonts and different funky colors. Excuse me. And, um... And because my name is Fabiola, everybody would always just be like, oh, man, you're fabulous or, or Fabs or Fabi or whatever. So then at some point, like it just it was like fabulous Fabs. That's just who I am, you know. And um, yeah, it grew from there. So basically, that's part one is just talking about bullying. It's talking about like me not loving myself where I was, what I, you know, like not thinking that I was worth anything because it was. I wasn't what everybody was thinking I should be I wasn't what you know what society thought I needed to be and I wasn't a nobody and I just didn't know how to stick up for myself until one day I I, I said enough is enough like I can't I can't do this you know